Hello and welcome back to a video tutorial for an introduction to latex math commands. This is the second video in the series. In the first video we installed MikeTex and Lix on our Windows operating system and we're going to go ahead and uh, start Lix and take a look at that. If you haven't already installed MikeTex and Lix, uh, please go back to the first video in the series and go ahead and do that. So let's go to start programs and open up Lix. And in case you don't already know what Lix is, in case you didn't read it the website, uh, from a first glance it looks a lot like Microsoft Word's interface. And what Lix is, is a document processor or a word processor similar, similar to Microsoft Word with some distinct dif differences. So let's go ahead and start a new document. Go to File, New, and type in some text. Now, open up Microsoft Word and do the exact same thing in Microsoft Word. Okay, now Microsoft Word, you have to do all the formatting in the interface and it's called what you see is what you get. If you insert a bunch of spaces, I'm hitting the space bar repeatedly, you will get a bunch of spaces and it will be allowed. Now obviously you wouldn't want to insert a bunch of spaces into one of your homework documents because it wouldn't be formatted correctly. Now if we go into Lix and do the exact same thing, I'm hitting the space bar repeatedly, but I'm not getting any spaces. That's because Lix is called a what you see is what you want interface. That means that Lix formats the document for you. It will not let you insert things that do not go in the formatting. And you, there are other ways to format your document with inside Lix. Now similarly, if you were going to Microsoft Word and insert a bunch of new lines, I'm hitting the Enter key repeatedly, it's the same thing. You get multiple lines, multiple new lines, just by hitting the Enter key. But if you go into Lix and try the same thing, I'm hitting the Enter key repeatedly here, I'm not getting a bunch of new lines. That's because, again, that wouldn't be correct formatting. And you'll see that new lines will disappear if they're not used. So without going over the Lix interface too much here, let's go ahead and uh, delete all of our text. The whole reason that you're using LaTeX or using Lix is to do your homework assignments. So let's go ahead and start a new document like we're doing our homework. So the way we would do this, we'd go File New. And the first thing you need is a title. So let's put a title. Next, you need an author. I'm going to use a generic name here. And the date. Okay, so now I'm going to show you about environments. Environments is how you do your formatting in Lix. So you can see up in the left hand corner here, this is the environment box. Right now this is standard. If I go down and change this to title, I get a whole new formatting and it's formatted like it's the title. Similarly, I'm going to go down and change this to author and change this to date. So all you have to do is either in the line that you're typing on or select some text and then you can change the environment that you're using. So again environment sounds like a fancy term but it's just a way to format. If I hit enter you're back in standard environment and normal typing. So we do our first problem and in the info for this video I have provided a link to the Mediafire website, you will have LaTeX Tutorial 1 and Tutorial 2 PDF files. These are two homework examples that we're going to use for this tutorial. So I've got the, one of those open right here, and I'm going to cascade these windows. Okay, so the first problem. So we start off with Problem 1, 
in okay so if you were typing this homework up in Microsoft Word right now when you got to you say let n and when you got to a1 through an you'd have to go into the equation editor to insert those so as we're typing normal text is typed in just like normal in Lex and when you need to insert a math object like an equation you can either go to insert math inline formula click right here it will do the same thing or you can use the keyboard shortcut control M so that's what I'm going to use control M and you can see I get this nifty menu down at the bottom with all these different math icons okay right now I just need the letter N and then you use the space bar to get out of your math object so we keep typing here All right, so now I need A1 through AN. Again, you can hit Control M or hit right here. You've got your math menu. Okay, so we need a subscript now. Here's the subscript. And you hit spacebar to get out of the subscript. Subscript again. Spacebar to get out. Now we need dots. Here's our dots right here. and a n subscript and spacebar to get out and spacebar to get out of the math object now you can see every time that we go into insert a math object we're getting our math menu if you wanted to view your math menu full time you go to view toolbars math and view toolbars math panels so now you view these these math panels full time right there's really no more fancy stuff in this problem so I'm gonna go ahead and stop typing this one and go to the proof section of it so if we look in the tutorial PDF we've got a lot of math type stuff in the um, in the proof so I'm gonna go ahead and start typing that up Okay, so now I need to insert 1 over A1, 1 over A2, through 1 over AN. So I hit Control M. I'm in a math object. I want a fraction. I can either go right here and choose my fraction type, or I can 